Hey, I'm Nick Boy and welcome to Pocket for Thursday, the 3rd of March. Today on the show, Quantum Broken Connections, RN Jesus, and Spencer's Grand Plans, which sounds like a show hosted by Kevin McLeod. I'd watch it. McLeod? All right, here's what's been making headlines. Psionics is launching a Rocket League Championship Series. The series begins on the 25th of March and it will run for three months. And the best part is anyone on PS4 or PC can join in. Teaming up with Twitch, Psionics have amassed a prize pool of 75,000 US dollars. The PlayStation 4's remote play function will expand to PCs and Macs with the upcoming firmware update. Firmware 3.5 is currently being beta tested by select PlayStation owners and is expected to roll out to all PS4 owners soon. Next up, and Uncharted 4 was delayed again yesterday afternoon with Sony announcing a new worldwide release date of the 10th of May. Of course, the game was initially slated for release at the end of last year, but after a couple of setbacks had, until yesterday, been expected this April. And it appears that Mass Effect Andromeda suffered the same fate, with EA CFO Blake Jorgensen announcing during a business meeting that the game would launch in EA's fourth financial quarter, which would place it between January and March of 2017. When the game was shown off at last year's E3, the trailer revealed a release date of holiday 2016. You know, sometimes I wish release dates didn't exist and games just spring out of holes in the ground, which is of course ridiculous. <laughs> that was my Gimli. The preload and server start times for The Division have been announced. Preloads for Xbox One have started, while PC players can start preloading tomorrow, and PS4 players can start from the 6th of March. At one minute past midnight on the 8th of March, Australian Eastern Daylight Time, the servers will go live. Be aware that because the servers are currently offline, even critics won't have access to the game until then. So if you're not sure about the game after reports or hands-on with the betas, you'll need to wait a few days after launch for reviews to come through. And the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences expanded their Emmy Award criteria to include content from YouTube. The Academy only recently expanded to include first-party productions from Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Hulu, but is continuing the online expansion with the inclusion of YouTube Red, Crackle, and Adult Swim. What we're saying is that you should vote for me for Best Actor and John, ladies and gentlemen, as Best Supporting Actor for our work on Rock Band Whiplash. <laughs> Who needs a gold Nick boy when I could score me an M boy? I'm joined now by Gog to discuss our final news story. Hi. The Windows 10 version of Quantum Break will require an internet connection. This is to stream the live action interstitials which play out after each act. Joe, what the hell? What the hell? I don't get it. It what doesn't make this? any sense. What is this? Okay, so to clarify, mm. Quantum Break is half video game, half television show. I think it's probably more like 70, 30%, or maybe even less, because you're probably gonna be playing for a few hours, then you have a 20 minute TV show. It's, yeah, true, true. But I, let's say half. Okay, sure, sure. You play the game, you finish a chapter, and then you watch a network length, half hour TV show that is in the game. Mm. The game you play as the protagonist, and then the TV show, I believe, focuses on the antagonists of the story. Little Littlefinger from yep. Game of Thrones. Yep, Game of Thrones. Uh, but yeah, so you're watching a TV show at the end of every every chapter of the game. You would think that this would be included on the disc. They Remedy say that the disc is full mm. for Xbox, so you it is not included on the disc. You will need to download it. But on PC, you have to stream it. Mm. I think by default on Xbox you stream it as well, but you have the option to download right, it. Right, yes. And for some reason PC can't download things. I have a bigger hard drive in my PC than I do yeah. on my Xbox. One sense. of the reasons that the narrative designer Greg Lauder gave for this is that he said that while downloads would be offered on the Xbox One version, the Windows 10 version does feature 4K resolution, making the video size all the more substantial. Mm. So he's basically saying, you wouldn't want to download 4K. No. I don't want to stream 4K. In Australia? Are you nuts? Why not give us the option, you know, like YouTube, let us select a 1080p Just give me the or... 480p version. I'm sure. probably going to be skipping most of it anyway. Yeah, I don't have a 4K display. Yeah, it's, it's wasted it, pixels. It's very, very, very strange. It, this being said, all of this could be completely invalidated. 
Greg Lauder is just the narrative designer, or not just the narrative designer, but he's the narrative designer. He's not one of the tech guys. He could just have this wrong and Remedy could come out and go, no, no, no. Like by the time you're watching this, they may have already come out and go, no, 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 this is all wrong. Lauder needs to be a little quiet. Yeah, or they just go, actually, you know what? We can just tick a box and now you can download it. Because like, you can, you have that technology. It's not that big a deal. You've made an entire video game where the Iceman from X-Men's face looks pretty much exactly the same in the game as it does in the TV show. You don't have the option for me to download 1080p video. Yeah. Ridiculous. Are you looking forward to this game? I am actually. It looks really cool. I love Remedy games. Mm -hmm. Alan Wake was amazing. Max Payne's amazing. Great track So record. I got faith in them. I am worried about 20 minutes of cutscene. Like, yeah. I feel like Metal Gear cutscenes go on way too long and most of them are only like five minutes. Yeah. And then you've got 20 minutes. I don't think people are ready to just watch TV. You yeah, know, it's very, yeah, it's very, I think, I think even though I love television, the act of taking your controller or your mouse or whatever and just pushing it away and sitting there watching something mm. is like, I'm here to play a game and even, even just walking would give me, yeah. would tick the thing in my brain that is like, yeah, you're playing something. And, if it's yeah. really good. If it's really good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be into it. Like the acting, the actors are good. Yeah. But from what we've seen, it looks pretty B-grade TV. Looks, mm. looks like it'd be on a, a, a dodgy channel. And I look forward to it stuttering and buffering the entire time I watch it. So it actually takes 45 minutes to watch a 20 minute episode. We'll see. Mm. Uh, all right, moving on now. It's thing of the day. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Thing of the day. RN Jesus smiled upon professional Hearthstone player Hafu during two arena matches. Hafu played Mad Bomber, which deals three damage randomly split between all other characters to synergize perfectly with a Guru Bashi Berserker for exact lethal on her opponent. Then only two games later, in the same arena run, it happened again. One more, one more, one more, one more, baby. <gasps> Like, I wasn't even that speechless the first time. That right there, though, twice. Holy shit! Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Thing of the day. All right, now let's talk through time where you suggest a topic and we talk through it. Today's enormous topic comes in from Keegan Yaxley, who says, for the talk through, could you please discuss the universal Windows application and the unification of the Xbox One and PC development platforms? I've read some articles that suggest that because of the UWA, Microsoft might start to sell incrementally better versions of the Xbox One to keep the hardware similar to what people are running in rigs rather than letting the current hardware stay standard across the generation. <gasps> Do you think this is a good way to ensure Xbox owners are getting the high fidelity experience of PC gamers or is it a money grabbing screw you to anyone who is dumb enough to buy a first iteration of the Xbox One, i.e. me? Keegan, you're killing me with your question. Uh, just to bring everyone up to speed first, and then I will let Joe talk. Uh, in an interview with GameSpot, Xbox boss Phil Spencer basically said that upgradable consoles could be in the company's future. And with Windows 10 becoming the sort of universal standard platform across all the Microsoft devices, that then they plan on blurring the distinction between Xbox and PC when it comes to games, and that small hardware upgrades could be part of this change. Mm. So Joe. Yes. We, we said this wouldn't happen a couple of months ago, Bajo mm. and I. Yeah. Do you think upgradable consoles could work for Microsoft now? I think they, there's a chance it could work. History shows that these kind of upgradable things usually fail. Mm. I mean, if you remember the expansion slot for the Nintendo 64, there mm -hmm. was a little memory thing you could buy and you needed that to run games like Perfect Dark and Majora's Mask. And if you didn't have it, you couldn't play it. No bueno. No bueno. No masks. But Phil said it's going to be forwards and backwards compatible. Yes. So that means everything should still work no matter what console you have. If you have the original one, it'll just get this kind of crappy version of the game. Yeah, he so. really does want it to be like a PC where it scales up and down and the base version of the game always plays. That is the dream. That is the dream we've always mm. had. He does cite PlayStation as currently doing something like this. He talks about the PlayStation VR being, you have the PlayStation 4, but then for the VR, you actually have the little breakout box, mm. which is required, which plugs in, which sort of splits the signal and-, and Does some extra stuff for yeah, it. Yeah, actually makes sure that the VR works properly. None of that hardware is actually in the PlayStation in the first place, so you do you do need it to play VR games, except I do consider VR kind of a sub-platform mm, of PlayStation. So. It's like, there are VR games, and then there are all the other games you can play on yeah. PlayStation. It's not, oh, plug it in and it makes all the games better. Yeah, it's a very separate thing, yeah. you know, you're not going to be playing VR games 
in a standard, or I mean, some of you will be able to, but some are obviously going to be VR experiences. Yeah. So just be this, a separate market that I think consumers will be able to get their head around a lot easier. Microsoft does run the risk of confusing people, I think, if they have you know, different levels of Xbox, you walk into a store and you go, well, why is that one $800 and why is that one $400 or... Yeah, and, and then that is the case if it's like you've got Xbox and then you've got Xbox One Elite or whatever mm. and it is better. Or you go into the store and you see Xbox and then you see Xbox, you know, power drive, Xbox graphics chips. Mm. And these are just things that you plug into... You just have this monstrosity Somewhere. of yeah. a console by the end of the generation. It's already pretty big. I don't really need it to be bigger. I get, Yeah, I guess it's weird. I, I've, I've always kind of gone, I don't really think this could work. Mm. And now they're going, we're thinking about trying to make this work. And normally I would go, you're an idiot, don't do it. But I actually kind of admire what Microsoft are trying to do mm. with the unification of Windows 10. About, yeah. I love the idea that all my Xbox games and my PC games in a few years' time, could be just played on either platform. Yeah, and they're essentially making the Xbox into just a Steam box, like, PC device now. They're Pretty just, much. They're just saying this thing's going to be, uh, you know, there's going to be different versions of it, different power of it. Like, it doesn't actually, you're not going to be locked into that. They might just, it might just be this case of, of they you know, they're, they're losing so badly in sales compared to the PS4 that they're actually going, we don't really want to make the Xbox anymore because if we if we don't make it anymore and we just make the console is the computer mm. then Sony will never catch up to us we have mm. like 2 billion computers out there <laughs> yeah they definitely have the advantage in the PC market yeah so. and that's just like for for the rest of the, I'm sorry Nintendo the, you, the NX is never going to catch yeah. up to the install base. And that's base probably we have. why they, you know, they don't measure in console sales anymore. They never say their console sales. Yeah. They say Xbox Live engagement. Yeah. That's how they measure their success. And if they can say, well, we've got 100 million you know, PC people on Xbox Live there, they win, basically. I really hope it works. All right, that's it for today's episode of Pocket. My Pocketeers, if you're Phil Spencer, please let us know in the comments how you plan on making that work. And if you're not Phil Spencer, uh, just let us know your uninformed opinion anyway. Uh, and while you're on the internet, please check out Good Game on Facebook, YouTube, and iView. Want to meet fellow Pocketeers? Then join the Pocketeers Facebook group and Steam group. You can follow Good Game on Twitter at Good Game TV. Follow Pocket and Nick Boy at Pierre Earth at GG Edit Monkey. He still doesn't have Twitter. You should get on there. I, you make I, it a stand? You know, I am actually point? on it, I just never use it. It's pointless, so you could add me, but you'll never see me write anything. It's... Add Joe. What, what, I could use a little less noise in my Twitter feed. What's the, what's the handle? I, I don't even know. <laughs> I am on it. I'll, I'll let you know. You can put it in the description thingy. Sam, make sure you put it in the description about an hour after the episode goes live. Uh, today's thing of the day was sent in by Maria Zelinskia. I hope I'm not butchering your name too much. Thank you very much. Maria, if you've made a thing, please send it in. And also, while you're in the mood for sending things in, uh, I'm doing Ask Pocket as the second half of tomorrow's episode. Please send in your asks in the comments below with the hashtag Ask Pocket so I don't need to look too hard. Until then, Nick Boy out. Bye. What, you forgot your name now? You're killing the show, man.